Well, welcome everybody to another Well Women Wednesday. My name is Dacia Moore. I'm a licensed professional counselor, as well as the executive director of Gateway of Hope, who is sponsoring our Well Women Wednesday. This is a conversation about women for women. Uh, every Wednesday in March from 12 to 12.30, we wanna just take a slice of your lunchtime to talk about interesting topics that you enjoy and that you want to talk about. Today is going to be more of a discussion because there has been a lot going on in the news, right? I know you have heard you I know you have heard about the um, interview with uh, Oprah, the Royals and Oprah, and some of the things that the uh, the Dutch the Duchess of Sussex said about her mental health. Um, Pierce Morgan uh, and his mental health and Kirk Franklin, um, who is having some challenges at this time. So we'll talk about that. And I'd love to get your opinion. And we do want to make keep it positive and, and uh, make it a learning opportunity for all of us. And so we'll get to it. But first, we are going to talk about Women's History Month. And I want to introduce to you Nellie Bly, uh, she was born Elizabeth Jane Cochran, and she is a crowd favorite because she was an investigative journalist. And after hearing of the horrible conditions for patients at the New York State Asylum, she posed as an insane, she posed as an insane woman in order to get herself admitted. And unfortunately, that was not too difficult. Uh, after 10 days as, in, as an inpatient, she wrote about her experiences in an expose, and that report was a catalyst for lasting and widespread mental health reform, uh, which was later published in a book, 10 Days in a Madhouse, and actually was made into a movie. Uh, and so we credit her for improvements uh, for women and men who have severe mental health issues. Uh, you know, we were, those were throwaway people uh, and were in deplorable conditions, much like the jail is uh, today. But we thank her for going undercover, took a lot of courage in her time to go undercover. So we applaud her and thank her during this Women's History Month. And that is your tip for today. Happy St. Patrick's Day. If you've got Irish blood, we want to wish you a happy St. Patrick's Day. I've got my green on. Be sure to stay safe today and, um, and celebrate your heritage. We're all mixed with a little bit of something and several things. And so we want to honor each of the different ethnicities uh, and the diversity that America has within its, um, within its borders. Uh, well Women Wednesday is brought to you by Gateway of Hope. We are a nonprofit women's counseling center located in Olathe, Kansas, but we serve the greater Kansas City area and actually broader than that via Zoom. So keep up with us on social media because we have lots of things going on. Tonight we have, have Lifeline to Hope, and that is our workforce development program for women who have been unemployed, underemployed, furloughed, or whose hours have been reduced due to the pandemic, we want to give those women a boost on how to get back into the workforce. If you have ever been in any of those situations, you know it's a crushing blow to your ego. And so we want to boost women up and strengthen them. All right. And then we also want to talk about people. <laughs> we are, we're going to talk about some folks today. All right. So Surely you have heard by now, let's start with, the, uh, with uh, Meghan Markle. You have heard by now her um, interview with Oprah Winfrey. And uh, I've just seen part of that interview. But the part that I saw, she talked about wanting to commit suicide and not realizing what she was getting herself into. And isn't that um, how it goes so often. We think we know what we're getting into. We think we know what we're praying for and asking for, but then when we get it and when we get on the other side of it, it is a whole different story. 
And I remember reading before they moved over to, um, to the uh, Northern Hemisphere, the comparison between how she was treated and how Kate was treated under the same conditions, under the same situations. And it was really an interesting um, spotlight on the difference in how the press treated each of each of those two women. So let me open it up for discussion. What did, what did you think about her interview? What did you think about what she had to say? What do you think about her her mental health? Anybody want to comment or open our conversation today? Is she crazy? Is she is she manipulative like Pierce Morgan said? Is she full of SHIT as he said on on uh, Good Morning Britain? Does he doesn't believe a word of it? What are you what do you think? Well, you know, when I first uh, heard about the interview and everything, I, I I was just thinking like, you know, I, I really just, I got enough going on in my own life than to be dealing with the Royals, dealing with the Royals. <laughs> I mean, that was my first impression. I mean, but then when it came on the second time and I got to hear her story, well, th there's definitely, it's definitely a, a, how she's being handled and mishandled. There's a difference. There's a difference. We can call it what we want to, but there there is a difference because in order in order for them to leave all that behind because of her mistreatment, it says a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and my heart just breaks for her. I mean, at the end of the day, no matter whether you're raw or you a average woman, we all mental health has a strong presence in our lives. And it shows that she's a human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it interesting yeah, that we often believe that um, money would fix it? And, and as little girls, we're taught we want to be princesses. Yes. But there's a price to pay. Yeah. I think that the establishment was so, you know, the, if you read the history, they're so thrown off by anybody outside the history. But for somebody to come in that looks a little different and comes from a completely different background. And I think Harry was always outside the establishment because he always dealt with his mental health, you know, since he finally came to the grips that he had not dealt with his mom's passing. You know, they're all human. And they're all, but to walk away from your family. And I know Harry says he's talking to his grandmother more than ever. But if you believe anything that if you watch the crown and you believe anything, even a grain of truth, the establishment is the establishment. They didn't want, they didn't want Camilla. Mm -hmm. And it took him 20 something years of, having an affair with her to marry her. And you got to think, I, I mean, I couldn't imagine living in that kind of lifestyle. And it would, it has to take a toll on every single one of them. And I couldn't imagine and wouldn't want it. But she loved him enough to go there knowing the history, knowing his mom had been chased down by the paparazzi when she died. I couldn't put myself through that. I don't know about how much I love anybody. <laughs> 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 yeah. But I knew, and I have a cousin who lives in London and she was super excited when Megan came into the family because it brought diversity it brought and it but it also brought to light lots of things mm -hmm. that had not been dealt with mm -hmm. over the pond in the establishment in the firm as megan called it because that's exactly what it is and, and they in the church in the the church of england the Catholic Church. I mean, 
there's so many things with race that was not dealt with. I was appalled when I heard they pulled their security. And Tyler Perry gave them security. I mean, who does that to your family? It, it, it was it was shocking. But yeah. I didn't watch the whole thing because it just like you could see it in her face. It was just so hard. And you could see it. I'm sorry, I believe everything she's saying. Because I have watched The Crown and I watched the way they treated their own family mm -hmm. and how they pushed people out. And Harry says, you know, there's a grand truth in everything mm -hmm. that's written about us. So. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Other opinions out there. Who who thinks that she's lying? Or Miss Gail, what, what are your thoughts? Well, like, I don't think that she's necessarily lying and i don't think that we can really call that because you know as well as i do i don't care if anybody even mentions suicide whether you plan or not i'm going to take it as being very very serious mm -hmm. what i do think is that um, um i do agree with you in terms of you know you got to be careful what you're hoping for what you're wishing for because you really don't get it now in terms of diversity in the royal family i think it's always been there it was hidden but when megan came on you couldn't hide it anymore you know because it was like boom here i am and i am biracial and yes my children could come out any color but you can't really base that on that because it could happen to us. I mean, you know, because DNA goes on down the line. It's all a matter of how we respond to it. And the firm is the firm. And they had a uh, certain type of image that they have projected for years and years and years. And so that was a threat, you know, and then just race and, and, and cast. I mean, you yeah, know, it's yeah, just yeah. very, very real, you know? And so um, um, <sighs> we just have to remember that. We just have to remember that. Piers Morgan, he's making money, okay? So he says whatever the heck that he got to say, you know, he will have a job, trust me. Somebody has already picked him up because the public likes, um, stirrers and y'all know what kind of stir i'm talking about right okay and so uh yeah i don't like it like it just is it just is and i forgot who else we were talking about well we're going to talk about <laughs> kirk franklin in just a minute well i will okay. talk about him right now um i don't know if you've seen on social media kirk franklin is a gospel artist he's actually credited for bringing gospel music uh, to the mainstream. I remember years ago, there was such a controversy when he came out with one of his first albums because everybody thought it was too uh, worldly. Um, and, uh, you know, well, he has a toxic, according to him, he has a toxic relationship with his son. He was on a phone call with his son. His son was recording the phone call and Kirk Franklin cussed his son out. His son is a, a, is a young adult. Uh, evidently was disrespectful. Uh, and then Kurt said some choice words, MF, uh, and some other words about you're not going to disrespect me. And uh, so there is a firestorm on social media um, about Black parenting, about parenting in general, about uh, corporal punishment, about respect. Um, because the son, after he records this uh, tirade that his father uh, uh, has on the phone, you know, puts it on social media, puts it on, I think, his Instagram account, and then uh, puts on, puts up a post saying, you know, how disrespectful was my father to me? And see that right there. <laughs> the child calling the father disrespectful. Now, you know, 
Uh, that I think is worthy of some discussion because it, it, it really feels like, uh, in one of the articles I read, it talks about the shift in parental power going from the parent to the child. And we've seen that shift in education. Uh, and so on social media, there are people talking about, yes, Kurt, you have, and he came out and Kurt Franklin apologized to his uh, fans for using that kind of language, um, et cetera, et cetera. But some half of the population is saying, you know, Kurt, we understand, we forgive you, we get it. Um, I suspect those are the people who have raised teenagers. I have raised two teenagers. I'm not going to tell you all what I said, what I have said to them. All right. But I did have to repent and ask the Lord to help me uh, because teenagers can get full of themselves. Uh, and he's not this. This son is not a teenager, though. Uh, but then you have people on the other side saying he was very disrespectful to his son. His son had every right to do what he did, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what are your thoughts about where we are in this country as it relates to parental power and the power that the child has to, um, uh, to one, to record your dad and then to post it uh, and then to believe that he's the one who's wrong? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I've got mixed feelings about that. Uh, anybody want to weigh in? I, will, I would like to. Hi, good, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rosina. Sorry, I'm not on video. I'm, I'm not video ready. That's okay. But I think, I think the shift is not only parenting, but the society overall. Like what is right, like everyone has their own truth, right? Um, and it's like people have no respect for authority, right? It's like police officers. I remember growing up, like we all respected our police officers, um, we respected elders. So it's it the time has definitely changed the the sense of entitlement, right? Like okay, well that's my truth. I'm gonna tell you the way that I want to tell you it. Um, unfortunately, I I did hear that snippet. Um, it was very sad because I felt like Kirk was entrapped by his son. So a conversation that we probably got the tail end of that conversation to where Kirk got fed up and tired and just kind of blew at him, right? Because we don't know what the prior conversation was. Did he hang up and call back and then poke, poke, poke at him until, you know, he was exaggerated and be like, you know what, you know, this is what it is. I'm going to give it to you. Um, it comes back to me being a woman of faith, you know, honoring your, honoring your mother and father. It's as simple as that. It, you know, so it was very sad. Yes, unfortunately, um, it ha everyone have their different opinions, but we all know what's right. We all know what's wrong. And we all are humans. Um, it's like, okay, yeah, Kurt, you know, cuss his son out because he's human. It hurts that you raise a child and he's going to come at you like, oh, you're, you're disrespecting me. <laughs> I gave you life, you know, where's the respect? So it's just, oh, I'm not a parent, but I, I really feel for the parents right now because it's like everyone is against you, even society. You can't discipline your child the way you would want to. Um, it's just unfortunate, but I, I think definitely conversations need to be had, um, you know, communication that's that's how I feel it was very you know kind of hurtful to to see that yeah thank you Rose I appreciate your you sharing that you know the bible and, and I'm glad that you brought up the fact you know this is from a Christian lens and the bible in the ten commandments the second commandment is honor your father and your mother and this is the first commandment with the promise and we are getting away from the bible we're getting away from our true north we're getting away from respecting our elders. I was somewhere the other day and uh, I was, oh, I was at the restaurant in here in Olathe and uh, I ordered something, you know, sat down and um, a, a gentleman was sitting on the other side, you know, we were social distancing and then an elderly couple came up, they gave their order. And then as they turned, I immediately got up, ma'am, because she was with the walker, would you like to sit down? 
And I'm thinking to myself, how come this man didn't get up? <laughs> you know, there was a time mm-hmm. when the man would get up and say, ma'am, would you like my seat? Uh, and, but it, he was a younger man. Maybe it didn't occur to him. Maybe, it, maybe I was too quick on the draw. But, you know, you saw her coming up to the counter. You see she's got a walker or a cane. The husband had a cane. You, we're sitting down. They're standing up. I mean, come on now. Well, the good thing about that is that you were the model. You see what I'm saying? So we that know, we have to continue to model because some people don't have a frame of reference. Mm. If you have never been taught, if you have never been um, 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 bought to that type of awareness of what you should do, then you don't do it. Or you think, well, why should I give up my seat? Mm. You know, so, you know, you can't confront them, but you certainly can model. And I think that is our responsibility. Let's talk a little bit about our responsibility and and really uh, bring that home because Uh, We can't help everybody, but we can help somebody. And I do think it is our responsibility to train up our children and grandchildren uh, to do what is right. You know, there's a song I listened to this morning, don't grow weary in doing well, don't surrender in the fight, keep on storming the gates of hell, keep on doing what you know is right. And each of us knows what is right in our circle of influence. Uh, I'll say a couple more words and then I want to hear from anybody else who wants to jump in. I I want to say one more thing. How devastating must it be for Kirk Franklin to have been betrayed by his son? That was a private, personal, family conversation. And Rose, I think you're right. He set, that son set up his father, set him up. And how, I cannot imagine the pain of being a father or mother and having my child not only set me up, but put me on blast. You posted this on social media knowing that I have a platform of to Christians and knowing how damaging this would be to me, which is exactly why he did it. But that deep sense of betrayal that Kirk Franklin must feel, I can't imagine. The Lord can imagine. I cannot imagine. I would be livid. I don't, I don't know if I would be able to talk to my child again. That, that's, that's, that's a damaging thing. And not only damaging to the father-son relationship, but to that whole extended family. Thoughts? I I think this new generation doesn't care for that. What they care about is followers, right? They they don't care about the damages and the hurts that comes along. They want that popularity. Um, They want that minute of fame. And if it means sacrificing blood, so be it. Mm. Um, You know, it's, it's unfortunately, it's ruthless, you know, because I mean, I haven't really heard much news about Kirk or anybody for a, a, a hot minute, but now he's back in the scene with, you know, his son is just like, the society is dying for attention. Um, followers, you know, when you think about our former administration, um, our former president, he would tweet three, four times a day. <laughs> you know, for that attention and people gravitate to it. They want to know more. They want more, more, more. So unfortunately, you know, it's a risk that he's willing to take. Maybe because he also think, knows that his father will forgive him because he is a man of God, you know, because we're, we're asked to forgive, you know. Mm. This, this hurt and betrayal is, going to affect the family this could be for generations to come i mean i mean this one conversation could cause 
Kirk, um, yes, I don't agree with the language and everything that was used, but you know, in the heat of the moment, you know, that was between he and his son and never should have gotten out on social media. It should have been handled between those two in the home or what have you. And this could affect Kirk's um, career. It could have a backlash on, on him uh, getting record deals in the future for generations to come. Because companies do look back what you're doing on social media and things that you do outside of your circle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this this is, it's deep. Mm -hmm. It is deep, it is deep. We have time for one more comment. Anybody else? Well, I think for the next uh, uh, next week is the last. No, we've got two more two more Wednesdays um, for Well Women Wednesday, and so we'll continue these open discussions about uh, if there are any current events that I certainly want to bring that to the fore because I think we can learn a couple of things. There are many many lessons here, many many lessons. Um, I think one lesson from uh, the Meghan Markle is, is you never know the full picture of what you're praying for. You're praying for, you're praying to win the lottery. <laughs> you're praying to marry Prince Charming. <laughs> you're praying to, to get that next big uh, contract or that next big client. Uh, and then, but it, so on, on the outside, it looks like that is the answer. That is what will make me happy. That is what will make me complete. But then when you get it, it is, it is fallible, it is imperfect, uh, there is bad that comes along with the good, and you just never know. That's why it's important for us to have a strong spiritual foundation, to have a foundation of prayer, to bathe everything in prayer. And when we come across those, um, those storms in life, we have our faith to hold on to. Now, I don't know Mark, Meghan Markle. I don't know anything about their faith. I imagine they're probably Episcopalian or Catholic or something very ritualistic. I, I don't know. Uh, but I'm talking about a relationship where you can cry out to the Lord, please help me because I'm struggling. As well as um, Kurt Franklin. I think the lesson for in the, the situation with Kirk Franklin is be careful. When you're angry, when you're angry, you, it is important to step back, step away, um, hang up the phone. And I'm not blaming Kurt. I'm actually talking about the sun. Uh, but I think the sun has, as Rose mentioned, I think the sun has some ulterior motivations to elevate himself, put his name out there for followers and for deals and you know to let people know I'm I'm here I'm I'm um uh, a, pre a presence I have a presence um that need for attention I get it I get it with social media but we have to really manage ourselves and we have to reel ourselves in so there are many many lessons um and I encourage you to pray for your family pray for them uh, and um, and certainly to yeah, Rose. We will. I'll add you to the email list. Thank you. Um, it's it's forgiveness though, forgiveness. And I, I pray. I'll pray for be praying for Kirk Franklin that he'll find the uh, the road to forgiveness toward his son uh, because that's what we're called to do. But it may be a long road. It might be a really long road. So enjoy the rest of your Wednesday for Well Women Wednesday. Again, happy St. Patrick's Day. God bless you and everything you do. And I'll talk to you next week. Uh, all right. All right. Bye-bye.